Welcome to part three. Now, for us to fully understand just how significant uh, Sakaja's actions were in getting and securing the release of Babo Wino, we need to understand what kind of politician Sakaja is. Okay? Now, in case you didn't know, Sakaja is a very calculating and cautious politician. Johnson Sakaja may be young, I mean at only 33 years, that's a young man, yeah? He may be young, but uh, it is also true to say that one of the best training grounds for a serious politician in Kenya today, and a successful one, is Sonu Chairman. I mean, being Sonu Chairman is one of the hottest political seats anywhere in the Republic of Kenya, and that is a fact. And so anybody who has been Sonu Chairman politically needs to be respected, okay? And Sakaja has been Chairman of Sonu. However, in being cautious, it also seems that there is also an element of uh, what broke the camel's back. You know, the last straw that broke the camel's back. You'll remember that in the run-up to the just-concluded elections, Bwana Johnson Sakaja was not vying to be Nairobi senator. Nope, he was not. He actually wanted to be governor of Nairobi. And indeed, Bwana Sakaja had already started spending quite a lot of money towards the campaign to be governor. Actually a huge fortune, okay? And then at the last minute, kuna mtu alimuambia, hey, kijana, tuliza bowl bwana. Governor, ah ah, your seat to make him to mengine. Very relax, eh? Go for senator. Yeah, you'll remember he backtracked, yeah? And this was during the heated, uh, very memorable jubilee nominations for Nairobi governor where this very powerful clique of Wazes within Jubilee had their own plans, very well laid plans, and they're the same people who frustrated Bwana Sakaja's plans to be Nairobi governor. Now, without boring you with a lot of history and what has already happened, yeah, the long and short of this is that the camel's back has been broken after so many different frustrations. Remember that this group of powerful group of Wazes came into power, took over Jubilee towards the end of 2016 as uh, President Uru Kenyatta was preparing for re-election. And so you can imagine the kind of frustrations and the number of frustrations people within Jubilee who want to be clean politicians, people who want to play the proper political game that somebody would want to play if they intend to have a future in Kenyan politics, those people have been frustrated many, many times. Yeah? And in that group of people, definitely, is one Johnson Sakaja. I carefully observed uh, Bwana Sakaja's body language as he was talking to the press outside the police station on releasing Babu Wino. And the man was angry. Who was he angry towards? Of course he was angry towards this powerful clique of Wazes. And therefore it is safe to assume this powerful clique of Wazes are the people responsible for the trouble when Ababu Wino has been going through. Now, let me be a bit brutal but honest. Okay? Tunaishimu Waze. We respect uh, old people. We respect people with experience. However, this powerful clique within Jubilee, the kind of politics they are playing is uh, the kind of politics that will go absolutely nowhere. In fact, it is the kind of politics that is going to destroy. No, I need to rephrase that. It is the kind of politics that is rapidly destroying the Jubilee Party. That is the truth. Now, you can arrest people, you can arrest bloggers, you can arrest uh, politicians who you think are a nuisance. You can completely trash the constitution yeah, and behave you know, like a dictator. Okay? And that is okay, if you think that kind of politics will get you somewhere, well, you yeah, that's okay. However, there are some things you do in politics, yeah, which uh, should be very obvious to anybody, that they will lead you absolutely nowhere. In fact, what they'll do is that they'll end up frustrating you from getting that which you're looking for, okay? Let me give just one example. This issue of Babo Wino is obviously personal. Okay? Now, the reason why it is personal 
is because uh, Babo you know, said some things which were very hurting, some things which were very insulting, some things which really uh, rubbed this wazes the wrong way. Now, here is the truth. It does not matter where you are practicing your politics, whether it is in the United States of America, whether it is in India, whether it is where Rev Timbuktu, or whether it is in Kenya. The basic rule is the same. Politics is about people speaking. And if you are to follow up on the things which people, other politicians say yeah, about you, or about your party, or against you, yeah, and you made it your business to make sure that you deal with them, to show them who is boss. <laughs> you will never be able to do anything else politically, number one, okay? Number two, you will not finish dealing with the number of people who say bad things about you, never. Not in one lifetime, not in 10 lifetimes. Because that is the nature of politics. The other side will always say hurtful things. Yes, sometimes they'll cross the line, not sometimes, many times they'll cross the line all over the world. So in the case of Babo Wino, it has become a case of let's teach this young man a lesson. Okay? And so, this is the agenda. Teach the young man a lesson. And it appears to be right almost at the top of the agenda of this was his. Meanwhile, will there be time to deal with other bigger issues on the table? Will there be time to deal with other much larger uh, crises within the Jubilee Party? Will there be time to deal with your political opponents uh, in terms of politics? <laughs> you tell me. And to make matters worse, they will fail. Why do I say they will fail? Why am I so sure they will fail? Because this thing is emotional. Bringing emotions into anything, bringing emotions to management, you will fail. Because you are doing things on a personal level. I want to fix that guy. I want to fix that guy. Meanwhile, you are forgetting what your main job is. Emotions cloud judgment. It is impossible to make wise decisions. It's impossible to make the right call. If you are clouded by emotions, it can't work. It has never worked. It will never work. Oh boy, I really went off uh, track there. My apologies. So these are the emotions that uh, Sakaja was dealing with. Yeah, uh, He seemed to be very angry towards a group. But his move was very calculated. Yeah, he released, uh, he organized the release of Babo Wino and at the same time hit out at this other group. Now, this would suggest that uh, Johnson Sakaja is hitting back yeah, at the frustrations within Jubilee. And you can be sure he's not alone. Yeah, why? Why can you be sure? Because the person who Sakaja placed a call to to secure the release of Babo Wino is a very powerful person. So the Sakaja wing, if we can call it that within the Jubilee power struggle, has some at least one extremely powerful individual in it. We don't have a name, but you can guess there are not many powerful people in Kenya. There are not many powerful people who are powerful enough to place a call to a police station and cancel an order that the police have already received. There are not many people. <laughs> and I can tell you something else. The other camp, the Waze, if I can call them that, the, the Stone Age guys, they are also extremely powerful, very powerful. Ndovu zikipigana, nani anaumia? It's the grass that gets hurt. When elephants fight, it is the grass that gets damaged yeah, and destroyed. And so this is exactly what is unfolding within the Jubilee Party. Now, a few people have shown their face from the other side. Oh, yes. There was a press statement that was issued by two firebrand Jubilee legislators. Moses Kuria and Kimani Chungwa. Moses Kuria said that he has also been put in cell several times and nobody from Jubilee came to rescue him. No powerful person came to rescue him. So he could not understand, he could not wrap his mind around the fact that actually Babo Wino, yeah, uh, <laughs> this uh, young man who has got no manners, yeah, was actually uh, rescued by a Jubilee person, a Jubilee leader, a very senior Jubilee leader. He couldn't wrap his mind around that. Same with the Jungwa. So they castigated, castigated Sakaja. 
the Moses could even said there are some people who just want to use the party, they pretend they are with the Jubilee, they want to use the party to get elected, and then uh, once they get elected, they, you know, the Kazia party measure, so they start behaving how they feel like behaving. This is really the long and short of what uh, the two are saying. So there's the clear battle developing for you to see, okay, very clearly. Now it is very possible that uh, this war within Jubilee will take a break. As we rapidly head towards the 30th of January, the planned swearing-in of Raila Odinga, the two sides may be forced to unite to deal with a common enemy, in this case NASA. But one thing you can be sure of, this is not the end we have uh, heard about this. Definitely not the end. And this is one battle within Jubilee that could very easily escalate in the days, weeks and months to come. So who will win? Well, I may not know who will win, but I know the Jubilee party will lose. Okay? Definitely the Jubilee party will lose as a result of this battle within. Now, there's something you cannot take away from Johnson Sakaja. The way he has rapidly climbed to where he is to one of the most powerful politicians in the land at only 33 years old, yeah, is not an accident. The young man is smart, yeah, and uh, he has also learned how to play politics. We have already seen through this uh, series that uh, he's not a novice as far as politics is concerned. Although this is the first time he has been elected, uh, you know, is the first time he has been elected as a politician. Yeah, you remember that uh, in the previous parliament, he was a nominated uh, legislator. Yeah, so this is the first time he has been elected. However. This is not a greenhorn in politics. The man understands politics. And uh, don't forget that Johnson Sakaja actually qualified, yeah, was actually admitted to the prestigious Harvard University in the United States of America. Yeah, that's an Ivy League uh, college. Now, he didn't go. Uh, he was not able to raise the fees, huge fees uh, to attend Harvard. Okay, so that didn't happen. So instead, he went to the Nairobi University. Yeah, however, that goes that uh, is just one of the many things. Yeah, that tells you that Bonasakaja is a sharp man. Yeah, and therefore, if you really pushed me to the wall, I'd put my money on the Sakaja camp. <laughs> yeah, I may be wrong, but that's why I've put my money. So let's wait and see how this develops. This should be very, very interesting. Amongst all the other political things happening in Kenya, this is one interesting one you should keep your eye on. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Mm -hmm.